Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, into your homes, onto your phones, or whichever medium you're using to watch me. Uh, Thank you for passing by. If it's the first time you're passing through, you know the drill. You can either like, you can either subscribe, you can either share, or you can put the thumbs down. It's your, it's up to you. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to um, read news items, listen to debates, um, and I just give my opinion. So, not necessarily fact. I try to be factual wherever I can, and wherever and wherever I cannot be factual, I put the link for my source of inspiration in the dis- in the description below. Now, today we're talking about the deportees. Oh no, not again! Yes, again, because we have to be reminded that the deportees are human beings who may have made, who did make a mistake, goodness knows how many years ago. 17 of them, apparently, were deported last week on the 11th of February, and not one of them, not one, committed murder. Now, there was one amongst the 17 who was, let's say, a victim of circumstance. His sister was sexually abused by someone. He got into a fight with that person who sexually abused his sister, apparently, and he was done for grievous bodily harm. Since then, done his time, turned his life around, but he's still labelled a foreign criminal offender. Sometimes when you think about these foreign criminal offenders... You have to think about your own circumstances. Is there anything that you could have done had you got caught that would put you in the same category? Now, none of us are clean. Not one. We all have something mysterious or not quite right about our past. It might not necessarily be a crime as of sorts, but none of us are perfect. So why I'm raising this is because I was watching a panel discussion and it seems as though Jamaicans, not all, some Jamaicans who have, let me say, a colonial mindset, believe the media, believe that everything that comes out of a Western country is true, honest, above board and superior. And so when they hear the media and when they hear the news about these seven foreign criminals, serious criminals, and whatever they call them, they believe them. Now, I was listening to one of the ladies. Um, It started off with a, a lady being interviewed about whether or not Jamaica should take on the responsibility of these Jamaican offenders. And what she said is, Jamaica has no um, no resources for it. There is nothing to, there's, they haven't got anything to rehabilitate them with. They cannot offer them jobs. So what is the National Organization for the Deportation of Migrants? Isn't that for that reason? Or don't, or don't people in Jamaica know about the NODM? It seems strange that there is such an elaborate system to accommodate and rehabilitate Jamaican offenders, yet nobody seems to know about it. Nobody seems to be talking about it. Very, very strange, in my opinion. So what are we what are we talking about? We're talking about this woman who says, Oh, England has got the resources. England can rehabilitate them. England can set them straight. England should keep them. England doesn't want them. When are they going to get it into their heads that this is a setup? It's a setup designed to not only double punish by making these young men do their time, then to deport them and in the detention, well, not even deport first, they put them in detention centres where they're mimicked and humiliated. Then they are deported with clothes on their back or if they're fortunate, they might be able to take a few, a few little bits and pieces. 
And then the media is hyped to make them look like foreign criminals so that they're embarrassed and humiliated. And if that's not all, the majority of them are left without money, destitute. People laughing at them, people humiliating them, further reinforcing what has happened while they're in England. It's a part, it's all a part of the oppression of the black men. But for some reason, people forget about our past. People forget about those people who oppressed and humiliated black men. They forget about it. And instead of in seeing what they can do to help them and put them on an equal footing, or because every mickle makes a muckle. You give a man a tool and he can do a job. But apparently one of them who was a barber, he went to look for a job in Jamaica. They heard his accent and immediately said, oh, where do you come from? Did you come off of the plane? Oh, you're a deportee. We don't want any criminals in our shop. So they're labelled. They don't have a chance in hell if people do not see beyond the camouflage. You need to look at the bigger picture. What you see is not how it is. Don't you get it? Surely you must understand that this is a big setup to put these young men down so that they can feel like nothing. They're dehumanized. Are you going to be complicit in that? Instead of offering a helping hand, are you going to just laugh at them and say, serves you right? Maybe, maybe you didn't have the opportunity to go abroad. I don't know what your circumstances are. Maybe you didn't even want to go abroad. But just because a few of them did want to go abroad, and some of them, they didn't even go abroad on their own will. They went with their parents. So should they be penalised for that? Should they be penalised for struggling in a racist society? I'm not saying all England is racist, but a lot of these men grow up in a system that they're not used to. And it's against them a lot of the time. And even more so with the hostile environment. And sometimes they do whatever they can do. I'm not saying all of them, you've got good and bad and the ugly. You have some guys who have been deported. I don't know what they've done. I'm not saying all of them. But we have to take into account that there are people among the 17 who have committed driving offences, who are overstayers. They're not all hardened criminals. So I'm not saying to you to go out and think, oh, which one is a hardened criminal and which one is the driving, um, which is the one that did the speeding. Maybe we should take the one that did the speeding and see what we can do. All I'm saying is don't generalise. All I'm saying is don't penalise them, further penalise them. Don't degrade them. Don't disrespect them. Don't laugh at them. That's all I'm saying. Because we never know what's going to happen. We never know our own situations. Karma is a bitch, you know. So we have to be careful how we extend and what we extend to others. Um, I just wanted to say, really, um, someone wrote me today. It's quite tragic because every time I get a letter, I think to myself, I really need to study immigration. Because this gentleman, he wrote to me today and he said that they've taken him to Heathrow Airport. They won't allow him to get in touch with his family so they can get his clothes. And they won't, what else was it? They said they've got to sign and then he's going on a plane. Now, my thought immediately was, because I am such a skeptic and I have to be careful about people who write to me and what they're writing to me about. Because I keep reiterating in my videos, I am not an immigration lawyer. I am not an authority on immigration. I give my opinion about certain circumstances. 
Now, I'm thinking to myself now, why is he sending me an email instead of sending his family an email? If you are telling me that you can't get in touch with your family, how do you get in touch with me then? And so I have to be very careful, but at the same token, even uh, unless I was a lawyer, I wouldn't even know how to advise him anyway. But at the same token, he is probably desperate. He's in a situation where he needs help. He might have seen my videos. He might think I know more than I know. He might think I've got contacts. Some people think I've got contacts. I don't have contacts. The only thing I can ask people to do is direct them to the government, the government website or the Home Office website for lawyers. That's all I can do. So it might seem as though I have that authority, maybe the way I speak. I don't know what gives people that impression when I keep reiterating I am not an immigration lawyer. And so then I feel kind of frustrated because that person is looking to me to help them and I can't help them. All I can do is signpost them, signpost them to Citizens Advice Bureau. If they can't get into their family, if they can't get through to their family, how are they going to get in touch with the Citizens Advice Bureau? Maybe he thinks that I, I know somebody who can go out and help him, but I don't. I don't have any connections at all in that way. I, when I give my email out, it's really to discuss topics. And I don't want to discuss any topic. I want to discuss topics where people have been treated unjustly and where, what is affecting mostly our black community. But, you know, whatever affects the community at large. That is my role when I do these videos. And while I'm covering deportation, it's the same thing. People have been unjustly treated. People are being illegally deported. And people are being received with disdain at the other end of Jamaica. And Jamaicans should know better. You should know how the system run. You should know that certain people aren't our friends. You should know that people are out to get you. Because that is what, that is the reality. We don't like it. But not just because you see in the newspaper and it comes from England or America that the people who are arriving on the plane are hardened criminals. You have to believe it. You have to give them some slack. You cannot be complicit in destroying their lives. Each one teaches one. And, you know, we all make mistakes. We've all made mistakes. And the thing is with England is that if you make a mistake and you're black and you're Jamaican or African, you don't get a second chance. They can't bring back slavery because it's illegal. So, this is the next best way of perpetuating slavery. Putting them in jail, releasing them as they do, dehumanizing them, humiliating them, castrating them emotionally, separating them from their friends and their family. What's the difference? The fact that they're not whipping them with, with the big old cane that they used to whip them with? Some of those policemen that, you know, those, some of those policemen that don't have no discipline, they give them a good arson. They give them a good whipping. So there's not much difference. So you have to kind of look, look, just look at the bigger picture. Don't believe everything you read and everything you see. Examine and say, does that make sense? Does it make sense? A lot of the time you'll find it doesn't make sense. And if you watch videos like Teach Them, well, I don't know if Teach Them, um, well, Teach Them is in Jamaica, so he wouldn't know much about the British culture. 
and what's going on in the UK. He wouldn't really know, but he does report on their stories. And we've got the BBC going out there. And, you know, to me, when I see the BBC, yes, we're hearing their stories, but what are you doing for them? You're telling them, oh, how do you feel? What are you going to do? Do you feel English or do you feel Jamaican? That's bullshit. Give them some money if you're going over to bloody Jamaica and interviewing them. I hope to God you're giving them money so they can set themselves up instead of exploiting already vulnerable people. You think by going out there and interviewing them, it's going to do anything for them? Just because we know what's happened once they've reached the other side, what is that doing for that individual? Is it rehabilitating him? Is it making him feel better? Are they giving him something? I'd like to know. Are they giving them money or are they an adequate money so that they can at least, for the interview, pay them for the interview a reasonable amount so they can set themselves up with a little something something? But I surely hope, I hope to God that they're not offering those interviews free of charge because the Jamaicans might naively think, the, J the Jamaicans who've been deported might naively think that if we hear their story, they might have a chance. They might be able to come back. But that's not how it works. It doesn't work like that. So unless they are going out there and they say, OK, if you want my story, give me 500 whatever it is whatever whatever you want and yes I'll give you my story but I hope they're not giving it for free because these people need money they need support they need friendship not everybody turning their back on them and looking at them as though they're a lump of shit they're people's children they're people's husbands they're someone's sister someone's brother they could be yours. And I know it must be difficult because it's a burden taking on people with no, with nothing. But they must be able to do something to assist you. They can't be whatless. Even if it's to paint your, your little shed or do some gardening or do something. You must be able to employ them to do something you have to get it out of your mind that they're hardened criminals and they're gonna rob and do all that to you because you have those people in jamaica anyway wherever they are there's good and bad in everyone so just because they're labeled as hardened criminals doesn't mean you can't give them another chance yes you've got to be wary who you bring in your home i understand that but i'm just saying there might be something that's safe for them to do. That's not going to put you at risk if you are worried, if you are concerned. And like the gentleman in the panel discussion, he says, you know, there's so many churches. What are those churches doing? Can't those churches get them to do the garden and give them a few shekels? You know, maintain the land or clean the church or whatever it is. They might have to start, you know, at the bottom and work their way up all over again. But they need to buy food, food more than anything. They need their basic needs met. Otherwise, what they're going to turn into animals. When you, when you know, they say a hungry man is an angry, no, a hungry man is an angry man. You can't let that happen to your people. I know that they're not real Jamaicans as you know them because they've been cloned in British culture. And British culture is totally different from Jamaican culture, but they were born on the soil, and whether it's through their parents or their grandparents, they are your people in. They are your people. And you can't let them fall into that trap of divide and rule them against us this separating them from us because we don't know what's happening we know it's end times but we don't know what these people have planned we just don't know 
So there might, there will be a time when we all need to pull together with love. People can be transformed if given a chance. What else have I got here? I said it's not a sin to seek an opportunity. It's not a sin to make a mistake. As long as you learn from your mistakes. What the penal system has done is punish them for their crime. They've humiliated them. They're sitting ducks in those detention centres. And those detention centres are worse than prison because they don't know when they're going to be shipped out. Then they're rejected. They're rejected by the system. They're rejected by the country. And then when they go to Jamaica, which UK considers their home, they're rejected there. Can you imagine what it's like to feel rejected? Can you imagine what it's like to feel abandoned? We've all been there. We've all been there where we felt rejected at some point in our lives and we felt abandoned at some point in our lives. And abandonment doesn't have to be physical abandonment. It can be mental and emotional abandonment. So we've all been there. And yeah, you can say, serves you right, it's your fault. But at the same token, you know, these people are very vulnerable. They're in a country that they do not know, that they left as a child. So they're extremely vulnerable. And their family is in the UK. So can you imagine? Just imagine for a moment. Some people come and whisked you off from your family. They've come, just come for no, you know, out of the blue, whisked you off taken you to a totally different country, left you with, left your kids behind and your woman behind and, you know, just with your clothes on your back, but for no reason. And they've taken you to somewhere else. And they've taken away all your means for support, all your means that could enable you to survive. In Jamaica, you can do your little hustle here and there. In England, you can't hustle. They've taken away every single opportunity to hustle. So can you imagine they do that to you? And when you can't hustle and you decide to go and say, boy, I'm hungry now. I forget get something to eat. And you go in a shop and you think, so well, sure. You know what I mean? And you come out of the shop and then the police are waiting for you and you get flung in jail. You don't have no people, then you know, you don't have nothing. And that's what it's like in the UK for a lot of those Jamaicans. They're here, but they can't do anything. You know, they can't do anything by themselves. And a lot of them are beholden to their women. And, you know, a lot of them, when they, the way, that's why a lot of them, they might say, they might say they're pussy whipped, some of them. But without their women, if they don't treat their women good, without their women, they can't survive in this country. Very, very difficult to survive in this country because this country isn't designed for people who are not born here. It's not designed for that. So when these guys have, okay, they've decided to get married and, and even then they're still under their women's thumb. They can't misbehave. You know what I mean? They can't misbehave because they're here and they, you know, some of them married these women, you know, whether it's for a visa or whatever, but they married them. But they've always got that threat over their head. Boy, you know, if I'm going to take on a woman or if I do this or if I do that, she's going to kick me out and blah, blah, blah. So there's always this thing hanging over their heads. You know, they can't feel free. It's a form of prison. They're not allowed to roam free in this country. And if they attempt to, they're picked up. And whether it's a little piece of weed, a spliff, they're flung in jail or have some kind of criminal record, any excuse to deport them. So, you know, you have to kind of think, 
It's things aren't always as straightforward. England ain't a cushy number for people who ain't English. It's not even cushy number for some black people who are English. It depends on how you navigate the system, how you, um, you know, if you manage to, if you're fortunate enough to educate yourself and you, you um, get a job and stuff like that. But, you know, we've seen, you know, the prisons are full of young black boys born in the UK. They're full of them. Why? Because the mothers are usually one parent. They don't have the father's support because goodness knows where he is. He was having fun in his heyday. He didn't feel as though he needed to stick with the woman. So he goes off gallivanting. The woman ends up bringing the, the, up the boys by herself. She doesn't know quite how to do that. The boys become unruly. Then them have to fend and look after their mother. They go out and do some foolishness. Boof. Prison. So it's not all hunky-dory. So we need to get real here. So when people, when you find Jamaicans who have been in this country since they were children and they are deported, you need to give them a break. You need to receive them with love. Seriously, you do. There's strangers here and there's strangers in Jamaica. Can you imagine how isolating that is? For those young people, for those kids who came to the UK thinking that England was their home, only to find out years later it's not their home. And they're made to feel foreign. Foreign here and foreign in Jamaica. Can you imagine how that must feel? Anyway, um, I think um, what else have I got here? Yeah, um, in the um in the video I'm going to put below, which is about the panel discussion, there's a Dr. Alfred Dawes, and he said they're not Jamaicans. The ones who came here when they were young, he's claiming they're not Jamaicans. They're Jamaicans by birth and heritage, but they're not Jamaicans because they're moulded by British culture, which makes them totally different. And the thing, the sad thing is, is that any, Jama any Jamaican with a British culture who goes to Jamaica and they're not on vacation, they're going to be associated with deportation and they're going to be associated with a criminal background. And that's very sad. So they'll either have to have an entrepreneurial spirit and see what they can do for themselves. Um, and that's all I can say. Like I say to people who are watching this video, if you're in the UK, save your money, send it to Jamaica. So you don't, you're not in this position of vulnerability. I can't stress it enough. You don't know when you're going to be picked up. You don't know when they're going to knock on your door. You don't know when a crime you did years and years ago is going to come back to hit you in the face. You don't know. So just see if you can send your money. There's, you know, you can open up an online account now to the Bank of Jamaica and get it transferred. It's not that difficult. Or they have um, a card called a Starling account. And you normally, it's normally used to go on holidays with. But you can actually top it up. I don't know if it's got a limit. I like to top mine up because I think, well, if I'm ever going on holiday, you know, at least it's there and it goes, to it. and as long as you take out the currency of the country, you don't pay any charges on it when you're withdrawing money from the bank. 
So you need to do something. It's called a Starling card. S-T-A-R-L-I-N-G. They've got quite a few of them. I don't even know what they call them. They've got a name for them anyway. It's actually a bank account, but it's a mobile bank account. All you need is a picture of yourself. And um, I don't know if you need... I can't remember if I needed an ID or something. I think I just needed a picture. But anyway, just think about it. You have to think ahead. And don't feel sorry for yourself now. Just think ahead. Just start planning. Have a plan. Ah, so anyway, um, I think that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to talk anymore. It's quite distressing, this subject. And sometimes I think, you know, what else is there um, to talk about with this? But, it, but it, there's so many angles to it. It's just not straightforward. And really, the purpose of this video is really for people in Jamaica to kind of understand what is happening, why it's happening, and also to be have a little empathy and compassion for these men who are returning to Jamaica against their wishes because of something they either did years ago because none of these are recent criminals as far as I know so just have a little compassion that's all I ask that's all for now bye bye